Welcome to Quick to Stitch. We provide embroidery digitizing services, embroidery designs, and embroidered items for sale. Thank you for joining us at our Quick to Stitch Embroidery educational channel. Today we're going to talk about hats. Where your hat driver should sit on the machine, what the parts of the hat ring are for, those bits and pieces, and how to load a hat for a good straight stitch out. So let's talk a little bit about these hats, these trucker hats. The trucker hat is a mesh cap or a net back cap that uh, looks like a baseball cap. It is also sometimes known as the gimme cap or a feed cap because this style of hat originated during the 60s as a promotional giveaway from the U.S. feed and farming supply companies to the farmers and truck drivers and other rural workers. John Deere of John Deere Farm Equipment has been credited for using the foam front snapback hat as the promotional giveaway. John Deere is um, the company that popularized this type of walking billboard. These gimme hats, these giveaway hats, were screen printed before construction. Even if they went um, so far as to use the costly decorating method of embroidery, it was still done pre-construction. They were done flat. It wasn't until much later that modern embroidery machines became capable, had the equipment to stitch a hat on a cylinder. As recent as the late 90s, hats were still being embroidered or screen printed flat before the hat was assembled. Now we have a hoop and driver system that allows for the decoration of a hat after construction. And this makes embroidered hats cost effective for all occasions, including the promotional walking billboard. So let's get started. The first thing I want you to see is where your hoop driver sits on your machine. Find yourself a business card and slide it between the uh, driver ring and the machine arm. If there is more than the space of a business card, you need to adjust that ring. You'll want to consult with your owner's manual to find the locations to loosen the ring from the driver so that you can adjust it up or down as needed. This will help you get the um, hat as close to the stitch plate as possible which will reduce your flagging and reduce needle breaks and thread shredding. Let's go look at your hat ring. There are some parts in there that we see but we take for granted. For example, there is a ridge and a line of teeth. We know that the teeth is, are going to be used to help secure the hat, but do you know what that ridge is for? It plays a very vital and very important part in hooping your hat. And here, this tab, do you know it has a name? Do you know that its function is to do more than just hold your stabilizer and the sweatband of the hat underneath it? It's called a bill stop and we're going to find out what the bill stop does. There is a space between the teeth and the ridge. That space measures approximately one quarter inch. If you turn your hat inside out and look at the area between the bill of the hat, the, the sweatband, and the crown of the hat, you'll see that there is a seam line that um, is also approximately a quarter of an inch. My friend Brian, who provided me with this nice education on hats, um, also provided me with several photographs, including this one, where he cut the hat in half um, down the bill so that he could place the hat on the ridge and show you how the ridge supports the hat in the seam and that quarter inch falls into the valley between the teeth and the hat ridge. In this photograph you see the teeth and the ridge along with the bill stop 
Um, in the center of the bill stop, there is a center mark that follows all the way through to the, um, the hat jig. You also see that there's another quarter inch of space. It's like a divot in the back of the bill stop. When you lay your hat strap over the hat to secure it to the hat ring, those straps that have two straps, a front and a back, the back strap is going to lay in that divot. Again, I just want you to see the cutaway hat, how it sits in the um, on the hat ridge. I also did a cutaway of my own so that you could see this at a different angle. Don't look at how it's placed on underneath the bill stop. Just look at um, how it sits in there, how the sweat band does not go all the way under the bill stop. So that bill stop is very important. What it's going to do is it's going to stop you from pushing the bill in the sweatband further under the bill stop. If you look at this picture, you'll see that that sweatband does not reach the back side of the hat ring. There's a reason for that. It's not supposed to. That space is much larger than your sweat bin that you've turned under. Many people, myself included, have a tendency to try to shove all of this uh, sweat band to the back of the hat ring and it causes the bill stop, the bill to rest on top of the bill stop, and the, um, the bill stop to get shoved into the hat. What's happening there is you're building up fabric that is going to raise your hat away from the stitch plate, again, causing flagging and needle breaks and thread shredding and thread breaks. Look at this one again. Do you see how nice and clean that looks? The sweat band looks smooth. The bill of the hat is resting comfortably against the bill stop. There's no bunching, no gathering. It's a very nice, neat, clean hooping of this particular hat. So I'm going to hoop a hat for you. Remember, I'm not an expert at this. I'm learning just like you guys. Hats are not my production, um, though I want it to be. So that's why I want to learn. Now, you notice that I put a bit of tape there and I curled my backing, excuse me, stabilizer. Um, that's to hold the stabilizer in place, otherwise it has a tendency to fall off. I've turned my sweatband all the way out, all the way around, front to the back straps. Um, I'm using a Port Authority hat here. I'm going to put the hat onto the hoop trying to be very careful and conscious not to try to shove that sweat band all the way under there. I'm going to hold it firmly on the front and I'm going to smooth things around to um, make sure that I have the bill on the bill stop. I'm going to grab the straps at the back and pull down. Bring my strap over, my front strap. The teeth are going to go in the seam. Oh, so it jumped. Um, just double checking things. The front teeth are going to go into the seam and they're going to wrap all the way, all the way from left, all the way over and all the way to right. Those teeth extend through the whole strap. So you want to make sure that they catch the hat all the way left to all the way right. So I think I got it. Just kind of tucking things in, making sure things are smooth. When I pull it off, I'm going to show you I'm a little disappointed because it's not exactly where I want it to be. Just a moment. If you look here, there's a little bit of a lump. Now this side, this strap um, catches the mesh, 
but over here on the right it doesn't. So I'm going to stop and rehoop this. Here we are. So if we look, the right looks good, the left looks good, I am much happier. Off to the machines. So how do you know the hat is on the hoop straight? Easy. When you put it on your machine, set your machine up and run the hat back and forth on the machine, front to back, front to back, and if you have a laser light, or pull the presser foot down and watch how it runs along that center seam. If it stays on the center seam, you're straight. If it veers off to the left or to the right, you're not straight. Go back and hoop again. And remember, you're going to hoop a hundred times and eventually you're going to get a memory for it and your hooping will become second nature. Okay. We're going to spend some time um, running the design. I'm hoping this will only be a couple of minutes long. Actually, I'm going to shorten it right now. And I'm doing this because our goal today is not to sit here and watch a six minute hat stitch out, but to see if the design file stitches straight on the hat as the result of our hooping. After I pulled the hat off the machine, I turned it around and looked at it and saw how the hat um, compressed into the teeth and the hat ridge. When I took the hat off the machine, I wanted to find a way to determine if I was as straight as possible. and. Um, so what I did was I took a piece of masking tape and I ran the bottom edge across the bottom edge of the stitch out so that I had a straight line across the stitch out which is kind of hard to accomplish when you're working with a curve here. I'm using my new dial caliper. It's a digital dial caliper. I found it at Harbor Freight for nine dollars and some change. Thought you might find it easier to read, but of course it doesn't help when I cut the picture off and you can't see the screen. But if you look, you can see that I measured this in three different locations and they were really very close to being exact. I am um, I'm considering that there's some human factor in there and calling this a straight design file. Okay, one last thing. Not all hats are made the same. Some use heavier fabrics, others use thinner materials. You're going to want to refer to your user's manual and determine how to adjust the straps on your hat ring. You'll want to adjust them for every change in hat type, um, hat thicknesses, hat models. It's only a moment. Once you learn how to do it, you just loosen it up, make the adjustment, retighten, and it does not have to be break a thumb tight. Um, just, you know, comfortable. Just enough to keep it from shifting in the ring is all you need. That's all I have today at Quick to Stitch on hat hooping. I hope you found this video helpful. If there's anything else you have um, questions about or would like to see a video about, please drop me a line here in the comment section or uh, my email. Again, I want to thank you for the time you've spent with me today at the Quick to Stitch educational video channel.